Okay, so in this lecture what we are going to do is, we are going to understand the difference between the ideal cycles which we have studied, the ideal auto cycle for example or ideal uh, diesel cycle and the real cycle. So, in, in, uh, in, in a real IC engine of course, uh, there, there is considerable difference between uh, what is ideal and what is real. So, let us try to understand the ideal and the real uh, cycles and the differences between the two. So, uh, coming back to the uh, to this diagram again, we have seen this diagram several times now. Uh, let us quickly understand the operation again, the four strokes. Uh, we are taking the example of an ideal auto cycle. So, this is an ideal auto cycle which we have already studied in the last lectures. Okay? And uh, these are the four, let us say, uh, processes, the, the isentropic compression process, the heat addition process, the expansion process from 3 to 4. Uh, and then again the heat rejection process here uh, from 4 to 1. Now, the first difference between this point, uh, this cycle and the cycle at the top which you see uh, is, is a sort of a real cycle which I have tried to uh, uh, depict here. Uh, this real cycle as you can clearly see uh, looks considerably different than the ideal cycle here. Okay? Now, what is the first difference or the first striking difference between the two? The first uh, striking difference between the two is that this cycle is a closed cycle. That means, the air which is trapped inside this control volume remains at the same location or inside the same confined space. Uh, the confined space of course is changing it is uh, in the compression and the expansion stroke. However, the air does not interact uh, with the atmosphere. It only interacts with the atmosphere through the work done through the piston here and the heat uh, exchange processes Q in and Q out. Uh, which takes place here. So, this air remains the same that means, the working fluid remains the same we just do the interactions of work and uh, work and Q uh, heat uh, and of course, the internal energy of the air keeps changing as the processes are happening. However, in a real system as you know we need to make an intake and we need to do an exhaust that means, every time there is a inlet stroke and then there is an exhaust stroke which essentially are quite different than what you see here. That means, this is an open cycle. That means, every time the inlet valve opens and as the inlet valve opens, the air fuel mixture comes in. So, this is a different composition completely. It is an air with mixed with fuel and when the exhaust gases go out, it is the burnt gases, the burnt gases which are going out of the system. So, if you see this control volume here, in this control volume, actually it is interacting with the environment through exchange of mass also uh, other than uh, exchange of heat. Okay? So, you have fresh mass coming in that mass is compressed okay? and during the compression both the valves are closed this, uh, this is compressed and then there is a spark plug and then the, the power stroke comes in and then the exhaust valve opens and then you push the exhaust out. So, the first difference is that you have this little cycle or th th this little uh, let us say zone here which actually is an add on uh, difference between the, the ideal and the real cycle. So, this is responsible for the suction stroke that means, the suction actually begins by taking fresh air from inside. Now, naturally there is an atmospheric pressure here. So, this you have to be you have to be lower than atmosphere. So, that means, as soon as the valve opens the piston starts going down and this, this volume here the pressure has to be lower than atmosphere. So, that fresh air can come in. So, this is the suction where the intake stroke actually up occurs here. There is no intake here, there is absolutely no intake here because of the fact that uh, there is uh, the, the it is an ideal cycle and we already have air trapped inside and we are only working with the same quantity of air uh, by exchanging heat and doing work. So, you have then intake and then a compression takes place naturally in the compression stroke uh, you will have some heat losses we are also cooling the engine and the, the compression takes place at certain point the ignition has to occur and as soon as the ignition occurs the volume starts increasing and then uh, the, the, the pressure starts increasing the enthalpy starts coming in and the, all the petrol has burnt. So, you can see that it is not really a constant volume process there is a small change in the volume the piston is still the, when the ignition took place the piston was still slightly going in the upward direction and then of course, majority of the heat has come more or less at constant volume uh, and then uh, all the heat has gone, but the piston has already started moving backwards and then you have the expansion stroke. 
in the expansion stroke also cannot be adiabatic uh, or an isentropic process uh, there will be some losses and then somewhere down the line the exhaust gas will open now it, as i as i have also told you in the class uh, during our physical interaction that there are finite time for this valve to open and close so it cannot open completely it cannot close completely at instantaneously zero time so it will take a finite amount of time uh, for the exhaust valve to open and then to close so it goes from a zero velocity position comes down and again so it is accelerated it comes down and again it go, it goes back and decelerated and then it stops so there is a finite time so therefore uh, you you cannot have instantaneous opening or closing or instantaneous uh, let's say operation so exhaust valve has to open slightly before the bdc so as the piston starts going down the the exhaust valve has actually opened and then the piston will start its upward journey uh, in in which uh, it will exhaust the gases so now naturally if you have to exhaust the gases uh, from inside the cylinder to the atmosphere uh, then in that case the pressure inside the cylinder here has to be slightly higher as soon as the valve opens there is an uh, the high pressure slightly higher pressure inside uh, helps to push the exhaust gas out and as the piston goes up uh, the it overcomes the pressure drop which is required to push the uh, push the exhaust from inside the combustion chamber uh, it has already burnt now Uh, it 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 needs to be pushed at slightly higher pressure than atmosphere uh, so that it can be expelled out of the engine so you see that there is another another uh, let's say process uh, which occurs here so the exhaust the exhaust process uh, and the intake process uh, forms this this loop here and this is an added work done uh, because you need to do work to to do suction and you need need to do work in exhaust so this is an added uh, let's say dissipative work which needs to be done and uh, the the work done here is actually we are not getting this work we have to do this work on the system so uh, actually it reduces the net work so out of the net work part of the work will actually uh, be 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 done uh, to do these intake and exhaust processes so that this open cycle can operate in a continuous manner so you can see the difference between the two Uh, and there are several differences in the compression expansion heat addition process also uh, because the heat rejection is not instantaneous as you can see here uh, in fact the heat is actually rejected by pushing the mass out so the combustion products they have certain amount of heat remaining the enthalpy is remaining and when the exhaust valve opens you push the piston upwards and in that process you actually take the enthalpy out of the system so the q rejection here Uh, cannot occur at constant volume so as soon as the exhaust valve opens the, the, the at, at this position the pressure is uh, pressure is reasonably higher than the atmosphere as you can see so exhaust valve has opened so suddenly a large amount of exhaust actually goes out taking away the heat so uh, part of the heat actually goes at constant volume but then as as you can see the heat as a uh, heat has go started going out the piston is still going uh, downward it is still yet to reach the bdc and after this bdc uh, the remaining the remaining exhaust gases after the initial blow down has occurred or uh, after the initial push which has occurred when the exhaust valve opened uh, this particular gas will be pushed out by doing work on the system uh, by this piston and uh, the piston will go out and take the heat out or the, uh, in the process take the gases out also so you see there are stark differences between an ideal cycle and a real cycle okay so in this lecture we have seen the major differences and these differences come because of several reasons what are the reasons for the differences we will take it up in the next lecture